Lucy Swan Show. Hello, hello, and welcome to your Monday. Hello, Jack. Afternoon, Swanee. Look, we are still on holidays, which is, look, I'm going to say, you know, past me is having a very nice time. (laughs) And you... In an alternative reality, it's Monday, so you're definitely under the weather and a little bit hungover. Correct, correct. But at least I'm on a beach in Greece, Swanee, doing that. That that is very true. (laughs) I'm probably crying in the corner of my Airbnb. (laughs) Uh, Now, we're going to talk all things sourdough. The obsession is real. I really knew that I'd hit peak crazy over sourdough. When I made seven in a row. I know. Seven at once. That was a big weekend for you. Can I tell you, the dough was flopping out over the floor (laughs) overnight. It was an absolute nightmare. But uh, let's go back to where it began. Also before three o'clock, Swanee, I'm going to host a little intervention with you and Tom about our Chrissy Swan Show shared calendar. (laughs) (laughs) The Chrissy Swan Show. I am now a sourdough bread maker. Well, I did get to try some of it, Swanee, when Poe was in. I know. And, and I really enjoyed it. That was the first introduction that you've had to my sourdough era. I admit I'm late to the party. Yeah, it's giving COVID, but... It is. Ab- everybody <laughs> lost their mind in COVID yeah. over sourdough, and I didn't. I lost my mind in other ways. <laughs> in more fun ways, I'd say, Swan. I lost my mind that involved Jimmy Brings. And a Pinot Noir. A Pinot Noir. Anyway, I was too drunk, probably, to make sourdough. Fair. But now I'm not. And I'm looking for things to give my love to. And it turns out that a sourdough starter is exactly like a baby. <laughs> and all of my maternal bits and bobs have kicked in. I care. I care about... This frothy glass jar of goo, more than I ever imagined. And I'm going to throw out the number here, 132410. A, are you obsessed with sourdough bread making? And B, do you have a name for your sourdough starter? Now, do you have any – I'm going to – it's almost like a press conference here because unless you have got to know what it takes – to get this sourdough starter mm. happening, you you could never understand. Do you have any questions about it? Where does it live? What does it look oh, like? What do you have to do? Several, because I am a full amateur when it comes to it. When you say it's in a jar, what do you mean by that? So you need to grow it in a jar, a glass jar, and you start with a very small amount and then it puffs up. And it bubbles and you have to leave it and smell it and set an alarm to make sure that it doesn't go off and that it's not, you know, being lazy. I just lost the will to live. I know, I know. But for some reason, it's like, see, I I love Tamagotchis. It's the same Tamagotchi thing, right? Okay, great. So imagine it's a Tamagotchi and you're looking at it and you're obsessed with it and you don't know why because it's not a living thing but you care if it dies. And then you've got to take some of it off and throw it away and then you've got to feed it and then set the alarm and feed it and then take – it has driven me mad. How did you learn to do this? Many, many Google searches. Okay. Watching the same YouTube video – 35 times because the minute it goes into my eyes, it goes out of my eyes. And at what point did you decide to go full chaotic Chrissy and name the sourdough? When I didn't care if it lived or died. And so what I thought is I would give it a personality and then I would be more invested. And my sourdough starter is called Sir Rise A Lot. Oh my God. God, Becky, look at her butt. Every time I lift the glad wrap off him, I say, Oh, my, my God, God, Peggy, Peggy look, look at her, her bubble. <laughs> right, so it's got a personality. Please tell me, have you lost your mind over the sourdough starter? And if so... Have you named it? We are not going to get any calls for people as unhinged as you naming their sourdough. I think you might be surprised. (laughs) The Chrissy Swan Show. I'm obsessed with sourdough now. I I know I'm late to the party. I pulled it out this morning, actually, and I fed it. And what did you say to it when you were feeding it? I said, oh, my my God, God, Peggy, Peggy, look look at at her her bubble. (laughs) Because my sourdough starter is called Sir Rise-A-Lot. 
<laughs> Strong names want to like it. I mean, the more I open my mouth, the more I realise I probably need to call my therapist again. <laughs> probably, but it makes for really great radio, so please don't. <laughs> Do you think I probably need a little refresher, a little recalibration? It's been a while. Okay, maybe. All right, Gabe, I'll give you a buzz soon. All right, Shelley, you are mad for sourdough. Can you believe how much it consumes your thoughts and feelings? Oh, my God, not at all. It's insane. I've only had my starter for a week. I was the same, never did sourdough over COVID, was too busy. Um, And I have overnight tripled in size, and I'm so proud. (laughs) I am absolutely proud. I haven't named my sourdough starter, but I feel like I really need to. Oh, well, let me help (laughs) you. Let me help you. Are you sort of a traditional girl, a 70s girl? Oh, God, no. I'm I'm pretty open to anything. What about Demi Lovatoast? Oh, that's nice. Do you like that? That's nice. Yeah, and I feel like my kids would like that too. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> you can have that. Did all? Oh, okay, I'm going to save another one. The thing is, I think now, Shelley, uh, you need to do what I did at about the seven-day mark, and I started putting a sharpie on the side of the sourdough starter jar before I went to bed, so that I could really see how much it grew. I've been putting an elastic band <laughs> around here. I wow. love um, this, Shelby. <laughs> This is not. Please nuts. check in with us next week. I want to see how you're going. Shay, what are, are you are you obsessed with sourdough? Come on, talk to me. Oh, uh, we my, me and my husband absolutely love sourdough, but he's the one who's been making it. I have to feed it every morning cuz he works away. He even called me to make sure that I've done it. Oh, and we've wow. made one sourdough so far. And was it so <laughs> delicious though you couldn't believe your mouth? Yes, we actually had like poached eggs and avocado and everything on it. Isn't it, so it magic? Delicious. And if you do like a cost per loaf comparison, I mean, I, I don't yeah, want to. Done that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what did you come up with? Because my daughter's favorite bread costs me nine dollars from the supermarket. I'm like, stuff that. What does yours come in at, Wendy? Ours. Shay. Oh, oh Shay. Shay. Um, it's coming. If we make it, it's about two dollars fifty compared to like nine dollars a loaf. You're getting ripped off. Mine comes in at a dollar forty. <laughs> Suck it, Shay. <laughs> Let's go to Wendy. Wendy, have you named your sourdough? Uh, yes, its name's Bob. <laughs> Why Bob? Bubbling Bob? Bob? No, I don't know. It just came to me, Bob. But I um, give away <laughs> some discard and I name them Bob Jr. Now, can you make a new sourdough starter from Bob Jr.? Yes. Yes. You, you, just, you, you discard it and you can make crackers or you can... This is a tip for you, um, Chrissy, that you can... Put it onto a like a greaseproof paper a tray and just smear it across and dry it and then you make it really crispy, like dried out, oh and you can God. put it in a jar and you, you've got that in your cupboard with a date on and it's just in case your dive you've you can start that oh, quicker. Valet Bob. I mean we don't want Bob to go that no, way. He but, hasn't. but if he does, you've done the equivalent of freezing Bob's eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's finish with Vanessa. Vanessa, what is your obsession? Well, it's not actually mine, it's my mother in law's, but um, at Christmas time, all the family, we hired a house down the beach, and my mother in law brought, um, brought her starter with her on holidays as with the family. Yes. Did she have it um, in a baby beyond strapped to her chest at all times for the temperature <laughs> control? What's wrong with just, just drinking, about. Vanessa? Why do we need to cook sourdough? <laughs> oh, look, it was beautiful and we really enjoyed it. But um, at one point she actually left a restaurant to go and feed it. Yes. So. <laughs> I absolutely get it. Rough if, if, does she have a, a name for it? Not that I know. Oh, look, I didn't even ask, to be honest. Okay, well, call her up and say, Chrissy has named your sourdough starter. She sounds like an old school lady, yeah. Marlon Brando. <laughs> Get I it? Will. I'll do that. I <laughs> love this. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. You're listening to The Chrissy Swan Show on Nova. What is this? This <gasps> is an intervention. Why? What? Boys. Be- I've brought our producer, Tom, into the studio for this one as well. I'm feeling really unsafe. You should. Good afternoon. <laughs> Jack and Tom, you're my darlings. Why are you looking at me with such serious eyes? We are your darlings, and there's something that we do to make both our lives and your life easier, mm. and that is share a calendar. Yes. Oh, my God. I Thank you so much. Because you're welcome. 
<laughs> Last year, it was working beautifully, and mm. we would see all of our guests in there. Any sort of pre-show commitments yes. we'd have, any meetings with our boss Sarah, it was it'd wonderful. All go in the calendar. The calendar died over Christmas break. Yes, and the start of the year was dire. It was, and <laughs> I was missing things. And you were. but you know that the reason why uh, it it is so difficult, it's because. I haven't had a Nova email address no. for 10 years since I've worked with the company, and that is because I can't keep up with the changing of the passwords. No, it's every 30 days. It's oh, so man. annoying. Also, one thing with that is, like, who cares if you – I don't care if you hack my work email. There's nothing in there. <laughs> do you have a format that you keep it the same and you I just do. change one thing? Yes, I, I do. Anyway, back to the calendar. Brutal. Over the last three weeks – We've managed to sort the calendar out with the help of Nick in our tech team. Yes, Shout and it's been Nick. great. It's been working great. It's a changed colour, though. It's red. Right. The things for work are red. Well, is, uh, is there yeah, a problem? Yeah, that's what we want to talk about. That's okay. what we need to talk about. Not only are the things for work red, but everything that you are adding <laughs> in is red. What do so, you mean, my personal things? Last year, we were differentiating between Chrissy Swan personal and oh my God. Chrissy work, but now, without... You realising, obviously, you've just been adding all personal calendar The lines have blurred. The lines have been blurred. And we are seeing... Oh, because I live in my calendar. Oh, no, we can see. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we know. <laughs> oh, my God. So, we have been I'm seeing... I'm desperately trying to think of what I've put in there. Every calendar entry... Well, you nearly added me with something yesterday, so today could be your turn. <laughs> what is it? We're going to go through mm. a couple of our favourite calendar entries from Chrissy Swan over the last fortnight because we wanted to sort of, I mean, take the piers before we <laughs> right. rectify the issue. What, these are right. things that I did not mean for you to know. No. Yes. Okay, go. Yeah. What is that? Tom, you go first. Your two favourites. So, uh, yesterday I woke up and usually I wake up and check my phone to see what <laughs> calendar, what, what stuff I've got going on during the day. Yeah. I look in at 5am. I thought, I've got a meeting at 5am. What's going on here? I don't work breakfast anymore. Oh, yeah, hours I can't anymore. work out the timings, yeah. <laughs> Five- wait, wait. You can't work out the timings. What's no. the point of a calendar? <laughs> no. Well, because I just know. <laughs> I just know that that's going to happen at some point in the day. Yeah. Anyway, oh uh, at 5am, hand cream into work. <laughs> well, I had to bring the hand cream into yeah. work. Don't forget it, Chrissy. I know now. <laughs> at 5am, though. So, do you... Yeah, that's when I wake up. <laughs> Do you? Great. And I thought the first thing I did was I opened my eyes and I thought, don't forget to bring the hand cream in. <laughs> okay. Why is this funny? I think and that's very normal. That, okay. Ridiculous. Uh, then the next one, today at 10 a.m., mm-hmm. I don't need to know that you've got an awning appointment. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very important. The For bell- you. Off my bedroom gets very hot and it's killing my gardenias. I need to cover it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All righty, that's Tom's favourite It too. went well, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> my other one. M- maybe Peg's Mother's Day stall. <laughs> not Peg's Mother's Day stall. Not go to the school for Peg's Mother's Day stall. It's just maybe, maybe Peg's yeah, Mother's Day stall. Think so, the stall. Thing, I'll see how thing, I feel. I mean, look, obviously you don't need to know that, but the thought process behind that note to myself, I thought it was only to myself. I wanted to put down that that was the day that it was going to be on and the maybe was could I be bothered. <laughs> I know what the okay, maybe so, was. So the, the, the maybe is about my mindset. That is definitely when the Mother's Day stall is. And I can tell you, no, you won't be going. <laughs> <laughs> I've known you long enough. Yeah. All right, my other favourite that popped up today mm. was it. Oh, God, what? 5am again? Yeah, that's when I wake up, guys. It's when I do all my important work. Hard rubbish collection. Please remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the reminder. I had forgotten. I better get all that crap out onto the street ASAP. <laughs> oh, sort it out. And we better get your crap out of our calendar. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, I like it there. No, I like yeah. it there. Three minds are better than one. <laughs> this is the Chrissy Swan Show. We are on holidays, but we are still with you. And we've gone through the archive. We're playing all our favourite bits and bobs. We are. We do love a music chat, don't we? We're mad for it. Um, And covers are a tricky one to get right, but sometimes you get it so right, you get it better than the original. Yes. Rare, but worth talking about. It's worth talking about. It happened this year, I reckon, Swanee, when uh, Billie Eilish got on stage at Coachella. We'll hear about that before four Mm o'clock. And our favourite, Holy Mama. Dr. Priya <laughs> Alexander is going to stop by. Eat the rainbow, people. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. And I am loving... I've sort of... When I'm not doing the daily radio show, 
I confess, I don't know whether it's because I'm not interested yeah. at my core yeah. <laughs> or if I'm just so busy with kids and cooking and planning, I don't check all the websites and news sites and goth sites and I you, just I just opt out of it completely. You're not getting your fix. I reckon it's probably a bit of column A, a bit of column B. I think it is because, I mean, you know, my kids don't want to talk about Travis and Tay being snapped at Coachella. Totally. I've got to come to work to for that. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that. Um, so I was very excited to get back into the rhythm this morning and get on all the websites. And I was, I don't know about them, um, the, the footage I've seen of Trav Same. and Tay. Same. Also, I feel like they look like two bogans at, they the, do. Gimp, at the Gimpy Muster. And it's like they've. Both for the first time found each other and then now they have to flaunt it to everyone. Like, they're standing in the middle of Dom Dollar's set. They know all cameras are on them. They know everyone's filming them. Thank like, you, I Tom. Like, I feel like there's... That's another thing I missed is somebody... Someone bringing you a cup Helping of tea. me. <laughs> helping me. <laughs> helping you do live. A cup of tea, a little microwave cup of tea. Thanks, Tommy. Um, yes, I know what you mean, Jack. But yeah. anyway, a real highlight for me, though, Swanee, you know how much I love Billy Irish. Hang on. Is Coachella over? I'm going to say it. Like done? Yep. It used to be the coolest thing and everyone in their crazy outfits and the big Ferris wheel and it was awesome and subversive and now I think it is cuck. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely on the decline. I mean, I'd still love to go, but it's definitely not as cool as it once was. Imagine the planning of your outfits. Don't. You'd have to start now I would. for Coachella 2030. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Billie Eilish, she made a surprise appearance on stage oh. with Lana Del Rey, who I know has an incredible voice, but Swanee, Billie sung video games. Oh, I love video games. Same. I've read about this, but I haven't heard the audio. So this is the original video it's games. You, you, oh, God. It's one of the greatest songs. It's so beautiful. And Lana Del Rey's incredible, but I think I prefer Billie Eilish singing it. Have a listen. What? It's softer. I think it's better than Lana. I know you can't properly hear it in this audio and through the radio, but it was amazing. It gave I think, me goosebumps. I think it goes without saying that it is going to be better than Lana Del Rey, and I know that that sounds naughty to say, but yeah. it's like, you know, Julie Goodwin making a spaghetti bolognese <laughs> and Neil Perry making a spaghetti. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's what the same It's the same dish, and they're both wonderful <laughs> Julie's cooks. just has more wine in it. One is better than <laughs> one is better than the other, all right? Do you know what I mean? I do, I do. But it, but it brings us to the topic of of our covers ever better than the original. And that is a very Ooh. controversial statement that you've just made there, that Billie Eilish's cover is better than Lana Del Rey's, and that is a great song. And I am going, I'm going to shock you, because you know that one of my queens is Stevie Nicks. Yes. You're like, a- I'm in love with her. Almost number one queen with Tay. She can do no wrong. And I had to look deep into my soul and answer the question, is her? Her version of Landslide. This. Oh, what a song. Oh my God, my boobs. It's like my milk has just come in. <laughs> oh, you're lactating. <laughs> I have lactated on live television before. I know. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> okay, so this is Stevie. So that is, like, magnificent. But the Dixie Chicks, now known as the Chicks. Yeah. Also released Landslide, and I, I think it might be better. And if you let me get my banjo out, in a snow covered hill, landslide brought it down. Don't turn it off. And see my reflection in a snow covered hill. I think I'm with you. It really suits those vocals they all have. And the harmonies are just killer in it. It's gorgeous. 132410, which cover is better than the original song? And no, you can't call and say Luke Holmes is better than Tracy Chapman. Well, you can. You can. (laughs) The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. A cover of the great Lana Del Rey song Video Games by the equally great Billie Eilish. (laughs) 
It is a magical song. Magical. And you have asserted, Jack Charles. Yeah. That it is better than the original. I know, people won't be happy with that because Lana is incredible, but Billy can just do no wrong in my eyes. And this cover, like watching it even just on YouTube, which would be nothing to be in there, gave me goosebumps. I know playing it on the radio doesn't do it justice, but... No, but... Chef's kiss. It was always going to be amazing. Yeah. We've uh, added our own selections uh, to to this uh, topic about which cover which covers are better than the originals. And you and I are about to have a full throwdown, Jack, because one of our favourite songs of all time is a song shared by the great Swedish pop star Robin and... What do you kiss her? Oh. I mean, this has been our song yeah. since you were a baby. And since you and I met in 2016, I sung this drunk in your home. Correct. At a karaoke night and it was fantastic. Oh, gosh. I found those photos recently. You were nine years old. <laughs> I was. And, I mean, I, I, I showed it to a friend and I said, I needed a working with children check to even have it. <laughs> In my house. I was freshly 19. That was a great night, and that is a great song, but I'm going to shock you. I think Callum Scott's version is better. I'm in the corner, watching you kiss her. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. You want to say yes. I'm right over here. <gasps> yeah. It just doesn't suit his voice like it suits Robin. It's like we get it, you've got pipes and you can sing, but let Robin make it cool. No, I disagree. I really... Can you see that I'm trying to agree with you, but my heart wants what it wants. And Callum Scott's is better. Brooke, what is the song where the cover version is better than the original? Hello? Hi, Brookie. Hey. Turn your my, radio um, down. My, my favourite... Um, oh, I can turn the radio down. Thank my you. My favourite cover version, which sounds better than the original, is... um. Bill Collins's version of You Can't Hurry Love from back in 1984. It beats the original Supremes' version by a country mile. All righty, let's listen to the Supremes first. The only thing that keeps me hanging on. What a great tune. All righty, let's hear Phil Collins. Oh, Phil. God, he was... Wasn't he a superstar, Brooke, back in the day? Oh, absolutely. Not too many um people can play drums as well as sing. Correct. Now, Brooke, I need to um, talk to you for a minute because you <laughs> have amazing. piqued my interest. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you got a background in radio or something or music journalism? What am I picking up oh, here? Oh, I'm a, I'm a walking psych- musical encyclopedia, as a lot of people love to call me. And have you ever made a living from being on the radio? You sound like Glenn A. Baker. Well, I've been on many radio stations over the years, but not one as you, Fitzy and Whipper, on the legendary Nova. Oh, look at you, even giving a plug. <laughs> even giving a plug, but I am not Kate Ritchie. All right, let's go. <laughs> uh, Natasha, what is Dead. the best? <laughs> what is the best cover version that outdoes the original? Hello. Would have to be Murder on the Dance Floor by the um, Royal Otis. Oh. I've never heard this. I, I've only ever heard Sophia Ellis Bexter's. Let's just go straight to Royal Otis because this is amazing. Yeah. Why aren't we playing this on Nova? I know. I think it may belong to another radio station. <laughs> <laughs> The Chrissy Swan Show. It's time for this. Need a doctor? Skip the waiting room and speak to a doctor online with Instant Scripts. Visit instantscripts.com.au today. Nerd Alert Monday with Dr. Priya Alexander. <laughs> Why do they always put a pause in there, Nerd Alert? It's Dr. Priya Alexander. Oh, my goodness. Everyone's favourite nerd. A chic nerd. Thanks, team. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> um, people are going off for this segment because they can get to ask the spooky, embarrassing humiliating questions and they don't have to have eye contact with anybody. Yeah, perfect. It's the best. Yeah. Have you ever had circumstances in your clinic where you've wanted to laugh at a at a problem that someone's bring that someone's brought to you? Like have you gone, oh my God. I'm gonna giggle. Yeah. After all these years, no, I've heard most things, but I laugh with my patients. So I've had moments where I'm like, I can't 
talk because we're both laughing so hard. Can you give us an example? At a shared experience. Well, when people go, this is what happened with my child or this happened on a date, I get to talk to people about all sorts of things. But I want to talk about things that are wrong with their bodies. Yeah, yeah. no, we don't she laugh about that them. so much. <laughs> Have you had to look at... I've looked everywhere, Chrissy Swan. I've been in every crevice in the body. That's my job. Oh, None of it's embarrassing. I love it. I would be such a terrible GP. Because You'd I would be wonderful. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I'd be like, go out and have a shower and come back in. All right, here is question number one for you, Dr Priya Alexander, as part of Medical Monday. Ash has asked for the best way to deal with vertigo. Now, Jack, mm. you think that you suffer from vertigo. Yes. I like the way she says you think. Go on. Well, no, I've experienced after a holiday a few months ago, I experienced it for like a week or two after. And then again, um, last week after a hot shower, I had had a cold, but I felt it after a hot shower. See, I'm one Google search ahead of you. This is not vertigo, vertigo, is it? Well, let's be clear. Vertigo is different to dizziness. So when patients come into my consulting room, the first thing I want to know is, is it lightheadedness or dizziness, that feeling of faintness? Or is it vertigo, which is actually the sensation of the world spinning around you? And isn't vertigo a virus? Aha. Uh-huh. Now, vertigo can be caused by lots of different things. Yes. This is the, this is the big takeaway. So, a common cause in young people is BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Okay? Uh-huh. You can also have Infective causes with a virus. You can have an acoustic neuroma, a benign tumour causing vertigo. Multiple wow. sclerosis can present with vertigo. Oh. Strokes in older oh, people. No, okay, so now Jack is going to have to go and see a therapist. Seriously. No, but I would say how do we manage it? It depends what the cause is. And can I tell you, when I see a patient with vertigo, mm. we are doing some funky examinations on the bed, tilting your head, yeah. looking at your eyes. It's full on. What's the cause? Because that determines the management. I had the virus version. Yes. And I tried to get out of bed and I was like... It's <laughs> awful. It was the weirdest Proper thing. Proper spinning. Yeah. So I've had it once and it is the amount of sympathy I had for my patients. It is the nausea. It's yes. debilitating. Yeah. I said to Will, call an ambulance. Yeah, okay. And he said, no. He said, baby, I think we're going to be okay and patted my head. Oh, that's, that's Will. Beautiful. I want Will to pat he my can head. Pat yours what too. about my dizziness and lightheadedness after a shower then? So that's often because you've been in a hot shower, so you vasodilate, which means all your vessels kind of dilate in the heat. It's not as good at getting the, the blood back up to the heart and to the brain, and so you, you feel a little bit lightheaded. There's a little right. bit less blood flow. But vertigo. I, mean, yeah. I know Jack a whole lot better than you do, uh, <laughs> Dr. Priya. And if I was your GP, I'd say, when did this vertigo happen? Was it on a Tuesday after a big Saturday night? <laughs> it was. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> That's what it is. All right, let's move on to question number two. This is an anonymous one, which means it's juicier than normal. Is it normal to have a bit of loose skin after a hemorrhoid? Hemorrhoids. I see so many hemorrhoids. I hear about them. Hang I on. see them. I examine them. What? Yes. You see them. Yes, you all the look time, up Chrissy. Someone. I do rectal exams all the time. So if anyone comes in with rectal bleeding, and can I just say, friends listening, if you have rectal bleeding, do not assume it's a hemorrhoid. Please let that be the message that gets out into cars yeah, okay. and homes everywhere. Don't assume anything. Go and see your GP. It, it could can be, be other stuff. Low quality toilet paper. It You've got to get three ply, baby. Or it could be <laughs> bowel cancer. Oh, wow, or it could that's... be polyps. Yes. Okay. So please come and see us. <laughs> I'm sorry to... That yes, I, a, I'm getting some good real, health messaging out. That was a real downer. I know. No, you know? but, but we team, I'm a, just we saying don't a, assume. We were having a light-hearted <laughs> giggle about, toilet, about paper. toilet paper and you said bowel cancer. Because I'm just saying don't assume. Correct, Dr Priya Alexander. You should never assume. Thank you so much for joining us on this Monday. Our time is up. We will see you next Monday. Have a great week. Thank you. Now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.